Um, hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be presenting an exciting project that we've been working on for the past couple of years called ClearBuds. ClearBuds were born out of necessity. The three of us were roommates when the pandemic lockdown started. And like many others, we took tons of calls in our home in close quarters. Between the kitchen, construction, and conversations, our house was a pretty noisy environment for taking these calls. During these calls, we'd often be wearing AirPods or other earphones. Um, and so let's see how the state-of-the-art AirPods Pro performing a typical day in our house. My roommate might start vacuuming again. Uh, but this time, we can hear a lot more of the vacuum. And there's still been noise in the background. Uh, it's the same vacuum, it's the same background sound. Uh, but the AirPods are using e forming. As you may have just heard, you can still quite, hear, quite clearly hear the appliances and background noise as if you're on the other end of this call. So to solve this problem, we use our collective experiences across hardware, software, machine learning um, to build the first system that performs speech enhancement using synchronized wireless earbuds. Let me first show you a video demo of our system. Hi, I'm wearing a set of wireless earbuds called ClearBuds. With more and more wireless earbuds like these, we see many people taking calls on the go or in noisy environments. For example, you might be trying to record something and your roommate starts vacuuming right next to you. In this system, we stream our audio to a phone where we run a lightweight, real-time speech enhancement network. Let me turn that on for you now. That's better. Not only can ClearBuds press background noises like these, but it does a great job at suppressing other voices too. This is because the left and right ClearBuds streams are time synced to the phone. Compared to single channel models that only learn acoustic cues, we have also spatial information to separate background voices as well. Hi, yeah, I'd like to order a. Uh, so even if my roommate pizza. were to come sit uh, next to yeah, me and order a cheese. pizza, we don't have to hear his ridiculous cheese in the order. breadsticks as well, why not? Thank you for taking the time to hear about ClearBuds. If you want to learn more, please read our paper. So, how do we build such a system? We make two key observations. The first is that by using microphones across the head, we get much better spatial information than if we use microphones on the same earbud. Specifically, the distance across the head is much larger than the distance you can achieve on a single earbud. And as you can see on the picture on the right, this is exactly what AirPods do today. However, this is challenging because it requires creating a synchronized but yet wireless microphone array. The second key observation we make is that if you look at what's happening in the ML community, Neural networks can outperform signal processing beamforming methods by about 8 to 10 dB. And this is pretty significant. The reason behind this is that neural networks are able to learn and capture the structure of human speech. The challenge, however, is that getting these computationally expensive neural networks to run real time on commodity smartphones remain difficult. So let me show you a system overview of ClearBuds. Suppose we have a speaker talking in the presence of noise and background voice. We'll give our speaker a pair of ClearBuds. ClearBuds then synchronously stream to a smartphone, which runs our lightweight neural network. Our system can separate the wearer's voice in the presence of any noise, and best of all, it operates real time for telephony applications such as phone calls and Zoom. So what were some of the key technical challenges when it came to building ClearBuds? The first challenge is to build hardware and software to create a wireless synchronized microphone array. Second, we design and implement a lightweight neural network for speech enhancement capable of real-time operation. And finally, we need our system to generalize to real-world multipath environments. We'll start off by sharing why we had to build custom wireless earbud hardware. It turns out that none of the existing wireless earbuds today support streaming microphone data from both earbuds. In fact, even if you look at your own AirPods, it's only streaming microphone data from a single AirPod, while the other AirPods microphone remains powered off. To address this, we create ClearBuds, which is the world's first pair of wireless earbuds capable of acting as a synchronized microphone array. We design a custom printed flexible circuit board containing a Bluetooth system on a chip, digital microphone, and a coin cell battery. Under continuous operation, our earbuds can stream for over 40 hours. Synchronizing micro wireless microphones requires three key components. We need a common clock across the earbuds for a shared reference of time. We also need a synchronized startup so that both earbuds start recording at the exact same time. 
And finally, we need an auto-correcting sampling rate algorithm to address any hardware clock drift between these two earbuds. You can read, dive into the full details in our paper, but the main result I'd like to share with you is in this graph below. You can observe that without time synchronization in red, the two earbuds reach a time error of about 640 microseconds after about five minutes. However, with time sync enabled, our earbuds are bounded under 64 microseconds. This is, the kind of, this is the tight synchronization we need to achieve the spatial resolution necessary uh, for our neural network. To tell you more about that, I'll hand it off to Vivek. Thanks, Maruchi. So the second key technical challenge that we had to overcome was designing a lightweight neural network that could run in real time on a mobile device. Machine learning models these days typically run on GPUs or on cloud servers. In fact, yesterday we had a whole session on deep inference on the go, so many members of this community are familiar with the challenges of running deep networks on mobile devices. So how did we address this? We started with a state-of-the-art time domain speech enhancement network. We then reduced the number of layers and parameters until we achieved something that could run in real time on a mobile device. As you can see here, the network uses about one and a half seconds of pass context and 44 milliseconds of look ahead. Anything less than 100 milliseconds delay is imperceptible on a phone call. However, the problem with this is that when we aggressively reduced the size of this network, it produced unpleasant artifacts that were very uh, audible to the user. So in this image here, I've included three recordings. On the left, we have the input mixture, the noisy mixture which was captured by the clear buds. In the middle, we have the output of the time domain network. And on the right, we have the ground truth speech. I'd like to draw your attention to a few regions in the spectrogram which I've highlighted with red circles. As you can see, the time domain output has additional artifacts that are not present in the ground truth. And although these are visually subtle, they're quite audible and result in hissing or popping sounds which are unpleasant to the listener. So the challenge we had to address was how can we reduce these artifacts that arose from cutting down the network size without adding back too much extra computation? The key insight we had is that these artifacts were very visible in the frequency domain. So we added a very lightweight frequency domain UNet separation network that ran in conjunction with the time domain network. And this UNet network was very lightweight. And in fact, the whole thing together still ran in 21 milliseconds on an iPhone. In our results section, we show that by combining these two networks, we far exceed the performance of just the time domain network alone. So the last key technical challenge that we had to address was training and gathering data to make the neural network generalized to a wide variety of real world scenarios. So why is generalization so hard in machine learning models? Well, first of all, the system has to perform in a wide variety of multi-path environments, including many that we didn't have access to during training. In addition, it has to work on many different kinds of speakers, including male, female, young, old, and different accent types. Finally, it has to work with many different types of noise scenarios. Now, you could imagine going out and gathering hundreds of speakers in hundreds of multi-path environments and gathering all this training data, but that would be logistically very infeasible. So instead, we started with synthetically rendered data where we could use large publicly available data sets and place these virtual sources in a rendered environment and simulate the multi-path environment and the frequency response of the headphones and some other characteristics. Interestingly, a lot of machine learning papers only train and evaluate on this type of data. However, it doesn't generalize to the real world environment because we're not capturing many important aspects of the real world. So the next type of data set that we gathered was by placing clear buds in a foam mannequin head and placing this mannequin in a room with speakers, then these speakers would play background noises. Then we could capture real world multi-path environments and also the actual frequency response of the clear buds. However, this type of data still does not collect the true <coughs> voice characteristics of a human speaker talking into the clear buds. So the last kind of data that we gathered was human speakers in an anechoic chamber that were speaking while wearing the clear buds. This way, we could provide clean ground truth targets to the machine learning model of what the human speech target should sound like. 
our key insight was that we could train a neural network on large amounts of synthetic data and fine tune it on a smaller amount of real data and this way it would actually generalize to the real scenarios. So let's see how our method performs. To evaluate clear buds, we had eight speakers wearing clear buds and talking in noisy environments. This wasn't in an anechoic chamber, this wasn't in a simulated environment, this was in fully real environments such as a park, a classroom, and a noisy cafe. <clears throat> to evaluate the quality of our output, we had 37 participants listen and judge on two, two characteristics, the intrusiveness of the noise and the mean opinion score or the quality of the output. Let's see how our system did. We provided users with three recordings, the input noisy mixture, the time domain only network, which as I shared earlier has unpleasant artifacts, and our output here in gray. And you can see that users significantly preferred our output in both of these two criteria. In fact, the mean opinion score increased by 0.61, and although this might seem like a small increase, in the ICASP deep noise suppression challenge of last year, the winning submission, which was running on a GPU, increased mean opinion score by 0.57. So this is, in fact, a very significant increase. Now let's see how ClearBud stacks up against other commercially available headsets. In this video, you're gonna see three examples. The first is the noisy environment, the second is the ClearBud's noise suppression, and the third is Apple AirPods in the exact same environment. I'd also like to introduce my colleague Ishan, who's gonna take you through the rest of the results section. And we thought about doing stand-up, but uh, I'm not funny at all. So we're not doing stand-up, we're not doing meeting minutes. And then I thought about doing Harry Potter, but the other guys really wanted me to do a British accent, and I also can't do a British accent. And so they're being really noisy in the background, and I'm just talking as if, uh, you know, I actually had thought of something to talk about, which I don't. But it's like I'm on a phone call right now, and I've got a couple of people who are being really noisy and standing around me, and it's really hard to hear what's going on. So. Oops, sorry. Let's play this again. We thought about two. doing stand-up, but uh, I'm not funny at all. So we're not doing stand-up, we're not doing meeting minutes. And then I thought about doing Harry Potter, but the other guys really wanted me to do a British accent, and I also can't do a British accent. And so they're being really noisy in the background, and I'm just talking as if, uh, you know, I actually had thought of something to talk about, which I don't. But it's like I'm on a phone call right now, and I've got a couple of people who are being really noisy and standing around me, and it's really hard to hear what's going on. So we're not doing stand-up, we're not doing meeting minutes. And then I thought about doing Harry Potter, but the other guys really wanted me to do a British accent, and I also can't do a British accent. And so they're being really noisy in the background, and I'm just talking as if, uh, you know, I actually had thought of something to talk about, which I don't. But it's like I'm on a phone call right now, and I've got a couple of people who are being really noisy and standing around me, and it's really hard to hear what's going on. Okay, so now I'm wearing a pair of AirPods, and I'm in the exact same environment, and my roommate might start vacuuming again. Uh, but this time, we can hear a lot more of the vacuum, and there's still being noise in the background. Uh, it's the same vacuum, it's the same background sound, uh, but the AirPods are using reforming, and so you can see the difference in the results compared to the clear buds demo that you saw previously. All right, so we saw how our system compared to AirPods Pro there uh, qualitatively, so how does this stack up numerically? So we collect SISDR data in a comparison between clear buds that you can see there in green and Apple AirPods Pro that you can see there in blue. And to perform this test, we used a manic head, mannequin head sitting in a ring of speakers so that we could repeatedly create a wide variety of different noise environments. And as you can see, ClearBuds outperforms Apple AirPods Pro in each of these scenarios, when there's background noise alone, when there's background voice, as well as when there's background noise and voice together. And in the paper, you can find further comparisons to other state-of-the-art machine learning models that release their code, both commercial and academic models. So as Maruchi mentioned before, one of the unique aspects of our design is this ability to effectively remove background voices. And in this figure, in the top 
waveform, we have a mixture of two voices, the target speaker as well as a background voice. And in this area in orange that you see here, in fact, the target, the target speaker stops talking, so only the background voice continues. Now looking to the second line, we see the Apple AirPods Pro is able to reduce that background voice somewhat, but is not able to eliminate it. And this is again an end fire beamformer with traditional signal processing methods. Next, we look at a single channel DNN model, the Facebook denoiser, and as mentioned before, a lot of these single channel models, they don't have the spatial information to be able to remove this background voice. So we see the power from the background voice continue in the area in orange. Now as we get to our model, we have the spatial information to effectively remove these background voices, and we approach ground truth that we can see there in the bottom line. Hey, hey yeah. So, uh, so let's see how this works in the qualitatively. Back of the cafe. Um, yeah, it's on the corner of like Post and 23rd, I want to say. Yeah, do you see it? It's like yeah, called Cafe. Hey, yeah, we're back here in the back of the cafe. Yeah, it's on the corner of like Post and 23rd, I want to say. Yeah, do you see it? It's like called Cafe. So this was a really important milestone in our project. We we're finally able to effectively silence Vivek, and all our work has paid off. Sorry, Vivek. Uh, so let's review. What did we achieve in this work? Well, first, we showed you uh, how we built the first set of wireless earbuds that allows for continuous streaming of two, uh, two channels of synch synchronized microphone data. And this allows us to effectively capture spatial data. Next, we showed you how we designed a neural network processing algorithm which can run in real time on a constrained mobile device. Specifically, we described how we overcame artifacts that arose when we attempted to take a traditional time domain network and run it on a phone. And finally, we showed you how we took the system and translated it to operate in the real world, both by using hybrid models for model, hybrid methods for model training, as well as evaluating in real environments, demonstrating performance that surpasses existing hardware, as well as the latest in machine learning solutions. So looking towards the future, for decades, one of the tools, the only tool that we had for acoustic systems was signal processing. And in this moment in history, we have a larger set of tools like networks, transformers, and generative models that achieve significantly better performance but require lots of computation. So by working across hardware, machine learning, and systems, we have exciting research opportunities ahead of us for inventing real-time systems that can make science fiction a reality when it comes to intelligent acoustics. And to help further this vision, we have open sourced all the hardware, the firmware, the software, and the network components of this project so the whole community can build upon this work. And you can find a link uh, here to be able to find them, those materials. I want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to our presentation today. And we're happy to take any questions.